Hello, welcome back. It is Monday evening and I'm about to cook up some leftovers. Meaty. I made a lentil bolognese with mushrooms and carrots and a tiny hair last night. It's become a bit of a Sunday ritual for me now to make a bolognese. So I will at some point film this recipe because it's really, really good. Last night we had it with rice. Tonight I'm gonna have it with pasta. Delish. Last night I actually stayed up, I think pretty late, finishing Sorrow and Bliss. I know I spoke about it in the last vlog. It's easily one of my favourite books that I've read over the past 12 months. Thank you Lottie for lending it to me. And if you're someone who has never suffered with mental health or kind of serious mental health issues, it's really, really worth reading just to give you a better understanding of folks who have suffered with serious mental illness. I'll do a proper review on it at some point because it deserves a proper review when I'll, I'll do like another big bumper book review once I've had some time to read some more books. We're gonna give Max's method of cooking pasta a go. Well, it's not his method. It's one he uses. What's it called? I can't remember. You basically bring the pasta water to a boil, add the pasta, let it boil for two minutes, and then you turn the heat off and let it cook for, a, I think, a further eight minutes. That was, I think, eight minutes. So like a little bit al dente, I might leave it another two minutes. Pasta is done, so it does work. Boil for two minutes and then <clears throat> let stand for 10 minutes. I know that if you hear, if I edit the video in such a way that you'll hear a podcast in the background, I'm just listening to this one. It's the Women's Prize for Fiction podcast. It's called But The Bookshelfy Podcast. And it's with, it's hosted by Vic Hope. And it's a really, really lovely podcast if you like books. I really, really like it. It's just like a warm hug of a podcast and it's a great place to, hear about books and it's actually the podcast that really like nudged me into reading Sorrow and Bliss. I am so thrilled to say that I'm continuing my partnership with Sky Cinema Club this year. If you've watched any of my videos over the past year, you probably will have seen me at some point talk about a film that is part of the Sky Cinema Club. I pick a film, I review it, and then we talk about it. And honestly, it's been such a dream partnership. I'm quite a homebody and having an extra excuse to cuddle up on the sofa with a peppermint tea, a box of chocolates and a good film is my idea of a good time. And last year I watched such incredible films, including Aisha, which was probably my favorite and I would highly recommend. This Is Christmas was another favorite, which was just such a gorgeously festive film. And also Mass, which was a difficult watch, but really, really stuck with me. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what this year has in store. I'm kickstarting this year with The Estate. This film's cast is pretty outstanding. It has Tony Collette, Kathleen Turner and Anna Faris in it, among many others. And it is about two sisters trying to win over their terminally ill, difficult to please aunt in the hopes of becoming the beneficiaries of her wealthy estate 
only to find that the rest of the Greedy family has the same idea. I really enjoyed this film. It was great to see Toni Collette in a role that I hadn't seen her play before. And it was really great to see Anna Faris as well, who I haven't seen in years. And I think she's a really, really brilliant comedy actress. I must say there are points of this film which I found a little bit depressing because obviously a lot of it is about greed but there is a good overarching message and I really enjoyed it. It was really, really fun to watch and I would recommend it. I really love it when we're able to talk about these films together. So if you have seen The Estate, please do let me know what you thought in the comments. I have just spent the past... Hello. I used up your leftover croissants. The leftover croissants. And then I did um, your your bread and butter pudding from your website. So I, I made a custard basically. Okay, hello, it's me. Um, so I've just been filming a recipe for disaster. Max made croissants on the weekend. And I feel like with croissants, you wanna eat them fresh on the day. And we had two left over. So I went on his website and I went to the bread and butter pudding recipe. And I basically just substituted the stale bread and the butter with croissants. And now I'm about to put them in the oven and bake them. And then I'm gonna finish recording the recipe for disaster and then see how far I can get today with editing it. And I also basically rearranged the kitchen. Um, it's ready. Oven's ready. I'm gonna let that bake in the oven and then I'm gonna finish filming and I'm gonna tidy up. I'm just procrastinating. I need to tidy up. Hello, good morning. I am just making myself some breakfast. I actually left you yesterday, I think kind of halfway through filming my recipe for disaster. I must say that that recipe that I made was absolute heaven and I think you will love it. So a couple of days ago, maybe four days ago, I saw Days Agaji, who if you don't follow Days, she is an amazing climate activist and just all around gorgeous soul. She's been on my YouTube channel before, you might have seen her. And she's also been on my podcast. Anyway, I digress. She posted a video that was kind of like a baked croissant dish. And she said she had croissants that are kind of ready, ready to go stale. And so she made this like gorgeous baked croissant dish. And I saw it and I was like, Oh, that looks amazing. It just so happened that it was really near the time of International Croissant Day. So Max spent a lot of time making vegan sourdough croissants one weekend, literally just the weekend just gone. He made a big batch and there were a couple of leftover croissants and I was like, I know what I'm gonna do with these. So I took inspiration from Days and then on Max's website, he has a bread and butter pudding recipe for bread that's stale. I took out the bread and butter element and then I put in the croissant element. I added a bit of turmeric to the custard mix to make it a bit more yellow. Honestly, it was delicious. Highly, highly recommend when you next have some croissants that need eating. And I'll also leave Daisy's recipe below um, for anyone who's not vegan. I would say Daisy's is probably easier. I then put my recipe for disaster video live. It was January the 31st yesterday and I hadn't posted on Instagram since December the 22nd so I was very proud of myself for getting a post out before February and then I just spent a long time like replying to comments and um yeah that basically was my day. On days where I'm doing recipe for disasters I can't really do anything else apart from the video. My plan today is to get back on emails and get organising a couple of the things I've got coming up this month in February and I do want to go for a walk. No! Well that did not work. I'm an inconsistent chef. I heard someone say in an interview the other day that the thing that makes a good chef is consistency. Your girl is not consistent. 
Yesterday we had a triumph, a triumph. Today, absolutely not. <laughs> These aren't so great. I'm really not my best work. I hope it doesn't feel like I just go from like talk. I don't know. I hope the vibe of the video is good for you. Um, I had quite a productive afternoon. I went for a walk, which is me being productive for myself. I got lots of emails done and I feel caught up on most things, which is good. I'm going to London tomorrow. So I'm having a bit of a freezer dinner. Got some fishless fish fingers in the oven. And I had some gnocchi in the freezer, which I'm about to cook. And I've got some broccoli. someone come to the door and say are you the lady of the house and I was like I don't know if I in my head I'm like I don't think I would ever describe myself as the lady of a house I was like no I'm renting I'm renting it I live here but I rent the reason why he thought he wondered if I was the lady of the house he said oh you just look really young and I was like, oh that's a nice compliment and then I'm like no but I'm actually dressed like I've just got back from school or I'm on my way to school, or I was trying to go to school and then thought, no, nah, not today. Anyway, it's time for coffee. <laughs> Plan for today. I have a meeting at 11 o'clock with Tessa Khan, who's been on my podcast before. She's an amazing climate lawyer. And then I have an interview with Elle at midday. And then I have a call with Labour Behind the Label at two. And then I'm gonna get the train to London. And that's my day. Good morning from London. I'm just on my way to get coffee from Origin Coffee, which is one of my favorite coffee shops in East London. I went into um, Origin Coffee because they just do such exceptional coffee. And I was like, oh, do you have anything vegan? Lo and behold, they have like five pastries that are vegan. And the plain croissant, they said that the plain croissant, the binding agent is almond butter. Guys, when I tell you this croissant was, didn't taste vegan, it was so light delicious. Now I'm on my way to One Scoop store who I'm working with on a swap shop event in London next week. So I'm just going along to make some selections because I'm creating a rail of pre-loved pieces. The brown suit. I'm also just getting really obsessed with Diane Keaton. Wave at my vlog. Oh. <laughs> Yay! Yay! 
Hello, happy Sunday. There is the most epic sunset happening outside and it's still a bit light and it's 24 minutes past five, which just makes me so happy. Uh, we are a long way away from when the sun was down at 3.30, which is very hopeful. I left you on Friday afternoon. I had such a fun time at one scoop store selecting all the pieces for the swap shop. And if you are ever in the Dalston area, I would highly recommend visiting one scoop store. It's all secondhand, but it is so well curated and really, really, really reasonably priced. I absolutely love them, cannot recommend enough. And then from there, I went to see my friends Lottie and Emily as they were filming for Lottie Murphy Pilates and it's Emily's birthday tomorrow. So I wanted to give Emily her birthday present. I got her the cutest, most perfect little pink fluffy crop top from a brand called Tash that I got from one scoop store. And it was just so perfect for her and she loves it. So that was very, very, joy inducing. Max left me this afternoon to go and do the food shopping and just like take care of some errands which was very kind of him and yeah I think I spent a couple of hours working which is not ideal for a Sunday but I often find I have to do it because otherwise I get really behind so I don't always have to do it but at kind of busier times of the year I guess um yeah I do have to spend some time working on a Sunday and then now I am gonna start making my Sunday night bolognese, and that's Sunday. On a medium heat, you wanna start cooking down onion and garlic in some olive oil. After about 15 minutes, add one celery and one carrot. At this point, I also add about a teaspoon of oregano, some chili flakes as well, black pepper, and after a few minutes, you can add any kind of odds and ends vegetables that you have that need using up. So for us, that's a bit of butternut squash. Some grated broccoli stalk is really good after a few minutes as well. This is just like an opportunity to use up any vegetables that you might have. And add a tablespoon or two of tomato paste. Also add a tiny bit of tomato ketchup. A couple of drops of liquid smoke and a splash of tamari, or you could add marmite at this point, anything that's got a good bold flavour. I then turn the heat up and add a tin of chopped tomatoes and a tin of drained rinsed lentils. They should have gone in before the tomatoes, I forgot, I'm a bad chef. I've just added a bit of water in the rest of the can to get the drakas out. I'm gonna add that. And then this is the point where you can add a little bit more seasoning. And then once it's at a kind of good sort of hot boil almost, you just turn down the heat and let it cook. I'm now gonna pop the lid on. When the bolognese is ready, make sure you test it and see if it needs any extra seasoning. I went for a drizzle of dense balsamic vinegar, which I think really elevates and I also went for some more of the Henderson's relish that one of you guys recommended and we bought more nutritional yeast so obviously all the nutritional yeast in the world. I also do think it's even better for leftovers so I'm looking forward to having that tomorrow night. Side note, Max has a really good recipe for vegan parmesan so if you want to be a bit more fancy, it's a super easy recipe and I'll leave it in the description box. That draws us to the end of this week hanging out together. I really hope you've enjoyed being here. I certainly have enjoyed filming little bits now and again this week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.